Hey there, Matt Allington here. Today I'm going to show you how to create a slicer panel. Now, I didn't come up with this idea, but I have seen it used, uh, specifically Amanda Kofsky, also the guys over at Power BI Tips also use this idea a lot. I really like it, and so I basically deconstructed the way they did it, and this video is here to show you how to do it yourself. So let me first of all show it to you in use. So here is a slicer panel. Now shortly there will be a tooltip that you can customize to be able to give some instructions to the people that are using your report. Um, but all you have to do is click on here and what happens is this little slicer pane pops out and it gives you a whole lot of information. So um, if I click on uh, some of the different attributes inside this slicer, so if I want to have a look at all the events in Asia Pacific that have been confirmed, um, then go ahead and, and here you can see the reports. Once you've selected the items that you like, you just click here and the slicer pane is collapsed and those slices have been applied to the report. It's a great experience and so I'm going to show you how to build this thing. Now I have an AdventureWorks report here and I thought it would be useful to have something on the screen so it's a realistic example. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is come up to the view tab and turn on the bookmarks pane and also the selection pane. These are both very useful things to be able to do this particular task that I'm about to show you what to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the little button that you would click on in order to see the slicer pane. So let me come here. In fact I need to make a little bit of space so let me just uh, create a bit of space for this panel out on the left hand side. You can of course put it on the right hand side if you want. Now I'm going to add a button. I'm going to use this right arrow button and just bring it down here and that's pretty much it. I mean of course you can do it exactly as you like but at this stage that's what the uh, button does. And I'm going to come over here add an action. So this is in the visualization section and make it a bookmark. And um, so I'll come back and make changes to that uh, shortly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add the slicer panel itself. Now, there's a few ways you could do this, but I'm actually going to use a text box, not a shape. And the reason I'm doing this is that it's much easier to control the borders and uh, a few other of the uh, properties by using um, a text box. So there's the text box, and I'm going to come over here, turn on background, make it white, no transparency. And also once I've got this shape here, note in the selection panel, I can move this up the list and basically put it at the front. So I'm going to move this up here. Um, you know, exactly how you lay it out is really up to you. I'm just going to leave a bit of a space down the bottom there. I might just turn on border, I think just put a nice little grey border around it just to make it easier. Now um, a little trick that Reed Havens showed me was to create a shadow and so I'm just going to control C control V and then let's see so this one is at front this one's behind so with this text box I'm going to turn off the border I'm going to change the colour of the background to like a grey and turn up the transparency and so you'll see that that should make a nice little shadow effect um, just behind the text box itself. So yeah, quite nice. Okay, so let's add a couple of slices. So I'm going to do that by coming over here and selecting a slicer. And let me put that right here. I'll bring in something. Maybe I'll bring in product category. So that looks pretty good. So that's the first slicer. And I might put control C, control V to copy that. Bring that down here. I might put year, so calendar year. And I think for this tutorial um, that will probably be enough. Now remembering that the order in which they appear is here, so I need to move this slices up above 
my text box like that. Okay, so just need to check the order. So for some reason I've got the shadow in front of the other one. So I just need to move those up like that. There we go. All right, now I just need to move these down a bit because uh, you can't actually multi-select and move. So because I need to have this little close button. So I'm going to add another button. This will be my close button. I'll just put that here. All right, so I think that's enough to demonstrate the point. So let me now, I need to remove these slicer items. And let me add a bookmark. And this bookmark will be called Slices Visible. And it's important that I turn off this data setting. So what this data setting does is it determines whether the slicer records any filters that have been applied. I don't want this bookmark to record the filters because I want to be able to pop the slicer in and out and actually change the filters. And so I need to turn that off. And once I've turned it off, I just update the slicer as I've shown there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these items. So let me see, hide that button, hide the slicer, the text box. Okay, so now we're back to this view and I'm going to add another bookmark and I'm going to call this one Slices Hidden. And once again, I need to disable the data setting here. What this data setting does is it tells the bookmark whether it should permanently store the filters as part of the bookmark. In this case, I don't want to store the filters because the whole purpose of the exercise is allow the user to change the filters. So by turning off that data setting, um, the filters will not be stored as part of the bookmark. Okay, so now let's test them. So slices visible, slices hidden. And now all I need to do is assign these bookmarks to the buttons. So here's my button. When they click on this one, I want to show the bookmark slices visible. And so let me do that. And then this one here, when they click on the button, I want to make the bookmark slices hidden. So let's check it out and see how it works. Control click in edit mode. But once it's published, that won't be required. So that's it. That's how you go about making a nice little filter slicer panel. And I uh, hope you can use that.